Hello everyone, welcome back to AGD's VJ remake of King's Quest 1. So, um, just to start off before I do anything further, I did want to point out, because I mentioned in the last video that I seem to have just very coincidentally clicked on the, the one walnut that you can actually pick up. Um, it really doesn't matter which one you click on. If I click on, for example, let's say this one over here. You choose a big, meaty-looking walnut from the bunch scattered around. Then, yeah, it's still, uh, he still goes to the one that I clicked on. So it seems that I really did just very coincidentally click on the, the one walnut that he goes to pick up. So it wasn't a joke. It was really uh, a, just a pure coincidence. It, it must have been a Christmas miracle. Okay, uh, moving on, then let's go ahead and restore to where we left off. And yeah, this is where we got the fiddle. And once again, we can play the fiddle. You play a lively toe-tapping tune on the fiddle. Funny how... Obviously, there are no music lovers here. You put the fiddle away. Funny how every, every version of the game has a different song. Um, I don't recognize that music. I don't know if they just made that little ditty for this game. Uh, in the PC version, uh, Graham plays a very poorly done rendition of uh, Turkey and the Straw, if I recall correctly. It's, it's kind of, I mean, I know I sang it kind of off-key, but the game plays it quite terribly off-key anyhow. Um, but in the Apple II GS version, I know I keep harping about the Apple II GS versions of these games every time I play them, but it's just because the sound in the Apple II GS versions is so good compared to what you had in the PC versions. On the Apple II GS version, um, the song is by far my favorite. It's some, I think it's an original too, and I think it's an original piece that was composed for the game, but uh, it's, it's really good in my opinion. It's actually quite catchy. There might be someone home. Okay, or they might have elected a new pope. The chimney manages to stand quite well by itself, Sir Graham. Tree stump? The tree was cut from this stump years ago. You can't do anything with the stump. Mm. Can I stump the stump? All right, let's move on. And if I remember correctly, on this screen is where the ogre shows up. It doesn't seem to be showing up now. It's funny, I mentioned previously that um, it seems to me that they've removed some of the enemies from the game. I guess I was wrong about that. Somebody pointed out that they are in the game just for some reason when I was testing the game uh, at first. I didn't see any of them, so I thought maybe that they had removed some of them from the game. But maybe they just made it so that they show up less frequently. I don't know. There is a mushroom in the meadow on the other side of the raging river. Far in the distance, you can see the spires and turrets of King Edward's castle. This is a wild and perilous raging river filled with jagged boulders and treacherous rapids. The mushroom is on the far side of the river. Okay, well, I guess we can't get that now. Uh, let's move on. This is where we got the bowl, I think. I, I think I'm going to start getting lost at some point because... Um, up till now, I've just been kind of aimlessly wandering around, but it strikes me that... An unusual clover glistens in the middle of the patch. Aha! Uh -huh. You pick a large four-leaf clover from the patch. That's nice. You are holding a large four-leaf clover. The clover is very delicate. Don't handle it too much, or you might just damage it. Yes, that's, uh, that's what they all say. Um... At some point, I may want to start playing this with a map, because uh, if I want to start getting specific things done, uh, that's going to be obviously a lot uh, a lot harder if I don't know where I'm going. And even today, even after I've been playing this game for almost 30 years, off and on, I still don't seem to have the, the map layout memorized very well. Uh, I remember some details about the map, but I don't really remember if I want to specifically get to a specific screen, I'd, oh, here's a specific screen that's worth uh, worth investigating. Uh, I should probably save here. I do like, I do notice, and I think this is intentional, um, screens that are a bit darker, uh, they, they have screens that are somewhat darker stylized and with more twisted and... Uh, 
naked looking trees, like trees without leaves and things like that. That seems to signify danger in this game. I'm not sure if that it was like that in the original remake. Somebody uh, pointed out in the previous video, I think, um, this game is actually modeled on Sierra's own remake of King's Quest 1. Sierra themselves did remake King's Quest 1 with the SCI uh, engine um, some years after the original release of King's Quest 1, sometime in the early 1990s, if I remember right. And the visuals in this game are modeled after that remake, so a lot of the stylistic decisions here are uh, Sierra's and not the uh, and not AGD's. But I'm not sure now... Um, because I, I did play that remake from Sierra, but I didn't play it all the way through, and I don't remember a lot of the details about it, um, how how similarly it looked to this game. But in any case, you can clearly see, I mean, the darkness of the screen compared to something like... Well, this is also kind of dark. I don't think this is a dangerous screen. I think this might have been just an artistic decision to have the trees down there uh, in the background, kind of dark like that. But here, for example, this is a dangerous screen, I think. This is where the witch shows up, isn't it? She's not here now, but I think this is where the witch shows up, and you can see that it, the forest is obviously much darker and the trees much more kind of uh, twisted looking here. Anyway, um... The path to the front door is lined with little gingerbread boys and girls. The path to the gingerbread house is lined with the biggest, most tempting candy canes you've ever seen. Can we eat the gingerbread boys and girls? You don't know how long they've been standing there. Eating them probably wouldn't be a wise thing to do. The candy canes are firmly embedded in the ground. You cannot remove them. Shouldn't that have been embedded with an E and not an I? I don't know. Can I look in the window? The windows are made from hardened sugar. You can't see through them very well. This window doesn't open. Okay. This is the most marvelous house you've ever seen. It seems like it's made of a huge gingerbread cupcake with frosting for a roof. The chimney is made of gummy bricks. The door is made of chocolate. The fence is made of candy canes. And sour ball stones and gumdrops are scattered around the yard. This is the... Can I... Oh, okay, this is probably... As you begin to eat the house, a squeaky voice from somewhere says, Nibble, nibble, little mouse, who is nibbling at my house? Yes, indeed, and that, of course, is the cue that somebody's at home. So if we go in now, we probably will get into some trouble, so I'll go ahead and save again. As you knock on the chocolate door, a squeaky voice from inside the house answers, is there? I love visitors, especially young tender ones. Come in, come in. Okay. Well, who could resist such a polite invitation? <laughs> oh no, she's cast some kind of spell to keep you from escaping. Oh, how nice of you to come for dinner. <laughs> The witch looks you over carefully. You're a little too scrawny for my appetite, but I think you're going to make a lovely dessert. The witch has turned you into a gingerbread man. Or is that a graham cracker? Yes. Okay, so that's uh, a little bit different from, obviously, from the original game, because in the original game, she just locks you into the cage and you just stay in the cage forever. Um, but here, the way that she turns Graham into a gingerbread man and then uh, puts him back up there, that's kind of funny. Uh, let's try this again. We basically need to keep doing this. Yum! The house tastes even better than it looks. Okay, so now that means that she's not home, presumably, so let's... There is no answer from inside the house. Good. So let's be rude for once and go in uninvited. As the green liquid is terribly goopy, the fire must have been burning underneath it for quite some time. Can we... The pot is hot enough to burn your hand. The fire must have been burning for a long time. Okay, can we eat something from the pot? I guess not. Um... So let's come in here and take a look at what's going on the here. The witch's bed looks hard and uncomfortable. 
Probably like the Witcher, though. So. the distance, you hear a high, squeaky voice. I can smell someone tasty in my house. Hmm. Usually when someone says you look tasty, that should be a compliment, but I think in this case that might not be a good thing. All right, she walks in. You need to get closer, but be careful. Okay. Oh, we need to get closer. Okay. I'm going to get my cauldron ready to cook someone for dinner. Hmm, yum. After I get the cauldron nice and hot, I'll be ready to have someone for dinner. <laughs> With a mighty shove, you courageously push the Wicked Witch into the pot. Her wild screams are suddenly cut off as she melts away into the oily green slime. Congratulations! I love the way the narrator's voice suddenly gets so excited when he when he narrates that, that text. Okay, so in here we have... Sitting on the shelf is a delicious piece of Swiss cheese. You take the cheese from the cabinet. This is an extremely fragrant piece of Swiss cheese. Did I mention the first time I played this game that Swiss cheese is not actually Swiss? Anyway. Um, can we... You wouldn't want to sleep on a witch's bed. Okay. In contrast to its delightful exterior, the inside of the gingerbread house looks dark and ominous. You see a note on the table by the bed. You grab the note from the table. All right, let's read the note. There is a message written on the note. Sometimes it is wise to think backwards. Okay. All right, well, I think that's all we can do here. So we're done with that. And now we should be able to walk down here safely without risk of the witch showing up. So um, I should probably save again. Uh, done with which, just in case something unfortunate befalls us. Oh yes, and here's the well. Uh, let's take a look at the well. Several unremarkable plants have rooted themselves at the base of the old stone well. Several un... Um, that's nice about the plants, but can you describe the well itself? A healthy tangle of vines is coiled around the well. He keeps talking about the plants and the vines growing around the well, but, uh, well, I guess there's not much to say about the well itself, is there? It's a, it's a well. Well, it's a well. This crank is used to lower and raise the bucket into the well. This weathered old bucket has served the kingdom for years and years. It still holds water as well as it did on the day it was made. Wow, that's one reliable bucket. If only the citizens of the kingdom were as reliable as that bucket. Oh, and After you are in the old bucket, your weight causes it to slowly descend. Yeah, that wasn't really what I wanted. I wanted, I guess I should have just, okay, hold on, let's restore. Um, I guess I should have just gotten out my dagger and used it on the, do I just click it on the bucket itself? You cut the rope using the dagger and take the old bucket. All right, and now we can uh, turn that crank. The rope disappears into the darkness. And let's take a, Quick look at the bucket since we have it now. You are holding an empty wooden bucket. All right. All right, let's let's uh, let's go ahead and do some climbing. Oh, and Graham climbs the rope automatically. Can I fill the bucket from You're here? You're not close. Okay, I guess I just have to jump in. Come on. There we go. Um... With difficulty, you manage to fill the bucket while swimming. Okay, if I click the hand on the water, yes, that causes him to dive. Oh, is this the magic chest? You are too far away to see clearly. It's you, Sir Gr No, not me, the chest. It looks like this chest has been buried here for a very long time. This isn't the chest you're looking for. Sadness. Okay. Well, let's move on. Um... Well, well, well. What are you gonna do now? Um, did he drown? 
Did he seriously drown from... Hmm. Do I need to hold my breath? So, I know that in... I remember in Space Quest 2, when you're in a scene like this, you have to actually type in hold breath to be able to survive this scene, because otherwise, uh, like, before you go under the water, you have to type in hold breath, but do you, there's no parser here. How do you hold your breath in a, in a game like this with no parser? Once again, a disadvantage of having no parser, how do you just suddenly make the character hold his breath? Do you click the hand on yourself? Um, or maybe I just need to be faster, but I can't imagine that I need to be faster because... I didn't really waste much time there. I mean, I wasn't dilly-dallying there for too long. So you let's let's see. The let's see what we need to. Uh, do we really just need to go straight through the screen and not uh, not try to use the chest at all? With difficulty, you managed to fill. Okay. Let's see. I'll save here in well water. All right, and this time I'm just going to go straight through. Just blitz on through. Break on through to the other side. Hello? Wait, do I? Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, so you just have to hurry up. You really just have to be... They really don't give you much time. Okay. Um, and I'll save again as past well water. Because you never know, there might be something dangerous in the next screen, like a dragon. Oh, this is interesting. Here they've um, they've done it a bit differently. Greed and scaly, the dragon is massive and muscular. Serrated armor stretches from its tail to its neck. His leathery wings are folded against his sides, and his webbed claws look sharp and deadly. The ferocious, fire-breathing dragon is protecting the magic mirror. Greed and snuffer. Can I just take the mirror as you it is? You have to do something about that dragon first. Hmm. I, I get the feeling that this screen might have inspired a certain uh, screen from Peasant's Quest. Anyway, can we talk to the dragon? Think again. When this dragon talks, things have a tendency to catch fire. Okay. That's straight. Oh. Okay, so I guess there are two things we can do. Oh, let's let's play the violin. Let's see if the dragon likes fiddle music. Ordinarily, music hath charms to soothe a savage beast, but this beast is a little too ferocious to appreciate fiddle music. It's nice that they actually thought of that. Um, so I guess theoretically what we could do is use the ring to become invisible and take the mirror. I don't know if you would notice that. I guess we can probably do this. With unerring aim, the dagger spins through the air and pierces the soft, unprotected skin under the dragon's throat. The beast convulses for a moment, then crashes, lifeless, to the hard cavern floor. Okay, so just as in the original game, we can do that. But of course, what we really want to do is make use of our bucket that we just recently got. Good shot! The water hits the dragon square in the face, dousing his fire. Unable to defend itself with anything more than harmless clouds of steam, the dragon rolls aside the granite boulder and slinks off in shame, leaving the mirror behind. Hey man, steam's not harmless. Have you ever, have you ever been blasted with a cloud of, of hot steam? That, that'll really scald your skin. That can definitely be dangerous. But anyway, um, I guess it was too much trouble to animate the dragon moving the boulder. You take so. the magic mirror. Congratulations! The nice... Nice musical sound effect to signify Graham taking the mirror. Yeah, I guess it was too much trouble to animate the dragon getting up and pushing aside the boulder and walking out through there, so they just animated his tail leaving uh, after the clouds of steam dissipated. Uh, I also really don't think that... I've never tried it. I've never tried dousing a dragon's fire with a bucket of water, but I really don't think that if you throw a bucket of water, the water just cohesively stays together like a projectile, uh, you know... 
uh, conglomeration of water and just travels through the air like that, that the water would disperse too much for it to really be of much use. But anyway, let's take a look at the mirror. This is the Magic Mirror, one of the three treasures of Daventry. The Magic Mirror's surface is smooth to the touch. Oh, does it not, uh... As you gaze into the Magic Mirror, you see a reflection of yourself as king of this land of Daventry. Okay, now I don't feel so bad about spoiling the game anymore since, uh... Since we kind of get a hint as... Well, I mean, I guess it was clear from the start. I mean, I think we all know how this game ends anyway, so... Uh, anyway, this is probably a good time to save. Got the magic mirror. Okay, so we're, we're already... Looking at the points, we're already something like halfway through the game. Um, this cave again. Which I still think looks very much like the cave from Quest for Glory 1. All right, so what's next? I guess next we can get the, um, 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 next is probably a good, hold on, let's see now, I'm just trying to think, um, there are a few things that we can do, but Actually, I'm already at 20 minutes, so maybe this is a good place to stop the video here. Yeah, actually, th this is probably a good time to stop the video. We already got one of the three magic treasures that we're looking for, so we're already something like a third, or maybe even a little bit more than a third of the way through the game. So I'll go ahead and stop here. Uh, so thanks for uh, for watching, everyone. Thanks for coming along with us on this journey through... Um, through um... Wait a minute, why do I have 80 points? I thought I had... Hold on, let me just backtrack a bit. Did I... I, I must have gotten two points from somewhere. Oh, you get two points for exiting through the cave instead of exiting through the well. That's kind of funny. Okay. I'll save I'll save to that, then got two points for uh got two points cave. Yes. Saving games like a caveman. All right, um, that's that. I will go ahead and stop here. Thanks again for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next installment of King's Quest One. Should be uh, should be smooth sailing from here, I hope. Uh, so I look forward to continuing then. Until then, ta ta for now.